Now, reporting from Lexington, Buena Vista, and Rockbridge County, this is the Rockbridge Report. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Rockbridge Report. I'm Brooke Simmons. And I'm Michael Freeman. The Trayvon Martin case from Florida is making national headlines. Here in Lexington, members of the community gathered for a vigil for Trayvon Martin, the black Florida teen who was shot and killed by George Zimmerman, a member of the Community Watch Program in Sanford, Florida. The local vigil and protest took place outside the Rockbridge County Courthouse last Monday night. Washington and Lee University law student Elizabeth Poem organized the event. She said 80 to 100 people attended the event and helped raise awareness about what she called injustice along racial lines. It looks that there should at least have been an arrest. And um, I think I know that from what I've seen of other protests that people calling for George Zimmerman's arrest and for a more thorough investigation, I think it's, that's what most people want. That's what I want. Zimmerman has not been arrested because he claims self-defense, and Florida is one of 21 states with a stand-your-ground law. That law gives people wide latitude to use deadly force if they feel threatened in certain situations. Virginia's state senate passed its version of a budget bill on Monday, less than a week into a special legislative session. The passage ended a standoff that began last month when the senate budget bill fell one vote short of the passing. The vote fell along party lines. State Senator Cree Deed said the process went smoothly in the second session because the Senate Finance Committee produced a budget that partially accommodated requests from Senate Democrats. The budget priorities that we listed were not funded 100%, but there was enough, um, enough of our priorities were funded in the, in the, the budget that it, it's a matter of good faith. You know, politics is about compromise. It was important, and I thought I had to vote for the budget. The state budget is now being negotiated by a legislative conference committee. Meanwhile, Rockbridge County Board of Supervisors expects to trim over $700,000 from local funding. Many area nonprofits, like the Free Clinic, already struggle to keep up with community needs in these tough economic times. Director Suzanne Sheridan says there's not much left to cut. We're looking at another big budget cut. I don't know that I can even speculate as to what we might do. You know, once we establish care with people, I feel like we have an obligation. The free clinic saw close to 7,000 patient visits last year. Sheridan and other local directors anxiously await word of budget allocations. Buena Vista Schools superintendent says they might be able to make it through this budget season without having to lay off any teachers. The current budget does cut some teaching positions, but Superintendent Rebecca Gates says she hoped these teachers can be relocated to unfilled positions. The school board passed a tentative budget last week. It trims $408,000 in spending. Now the school board is waiting for the city council and the state to approve their budgets. Those budgets will determine the actual amount of funding the school will receive next year. BV school officials say if the city and state budgets are less than expected, there could be more cuts. Also in Buena Vista, a proposed 2% increase of the local meal tax has citizens up in arms. City Manager Jay Scudder estimates the increase will bring in $84,000 in additional revenues. But local restaurant owners say they are worried the tax increase will hurt business as more people may decide to eat in. Although the budget is a hot topic in Richmond, Governor Bob McDonald was able to make, a vi make time to visit Lexington. Governor McDonald brought good news for the cadets at Virginia Military Institute as they near graduation. Michael McGuire was there to capture the VMI parade honoring the governor. Virginia Governor Bob McDonald came to Virginia Military Institute's campus on Friday to review a parade put on by the school's cadets. First Class Cadet Joe Mano says this parade is a gift for the governor, the commander-in-chief of the state militia, which includes VMI cadets. This parade is just a small token of our appreciation. Um, it'll be done by the entire Corps of Cadets um, to recognize him for all that he does. The governor wasn't the only person in attendance. VMI alumni, prospective cadets, and Lexington community members also came to watch the school tradition that dates back to its founding in 1839. Once all 1,500 students were in formation, the governor rewarded the cadets wearing wool uniforms in the 84-degree heat. For those on confinement or penalty tour, I hereby grant you amnesty. 
The amnesty granted by the governor doesn't pardon any crime committed by the cadets. It instead helps them to clear their school records before graduation. Wrinkled uniforms and five o'clock shadow can earn VMI cadets hours of marching around campus or confinement. Graduating, cadets have to work off all their PTs and all their confinements. So if for some reason you've kind of accumulated quite a few over the course of the year, the governor is basically going to be your saving grace today. Although Munno, senior class president at VMI, estimates that over half of the cadets have penalties on their record, the governor's proclamation of amnesty won't affect him. My slate is actually clean right now, so yep, I've been pretty lucky. The cadets granted amnesty this afternoon will graduate from VMI on May 16th. About half of them will enter into military service. This is Michael McGuire for the Rockbridge Report, Lexington, Virginia. Governor McDonnell, who served 21 years in the Army, made no reference to the possible vice presidency in his remarks to the cadets. On Tuesday, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is coming to Lexington to receive VMI's Diplomat Award. The presentation of the award is scheduled for noon in Cameron Hall. Lexington residents are preparing for the possible legalization of chickens in the city. Find out how next. South River has been restocked, but some fishermen tried to beat the rush and get to the fish first. Stay tuned to find out more. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Every book is an adventure waiting to come to life. Visit new worlds. Encounter new friends. And discover the power of reading. Go to read.gov to read A Princess of Mars, the first novel to feature John Carter. A new world awaits. Read. Right now, raising chickens is a crime in Lexington, but as Rockridge reporter Alex Maragos reports, several local residents are hoping to change that law. Local author Patricia Foreman says she's getting Lexington ready for the next big thing, urban chickens. It's literally a wave of, of, um, of cities that are changing their laws to, to allow, and in many cases even enable, encourage residents to keep chickens. Foreman hosted a chicken workshop at the old courthouse last weekend to teach local residents how to raise their own flock. It's such a simple, simple yet powerful idea, and that's why, that's why it's not going to go away. Doyle Patterson grew up raising chickens. He says the workshop will help him raise a new flock after 40 years away from the farm. The idea of having chickens just brings you back home again. And since it is legal where we live, it's one of the things I wanted to get into. Patterson can raise chickens at his home because he lives in Rockbridge County. In Lexington, debate has continued for over five years about allowing urban chickens. Councilman Bob Lira is skeptical about how much support there really is for chickens in Lexington. I'm not interested in passing any ordinances for one or two families at all. Councilman Lira is concerned that city chickens will go against the vision that visitors and residents have for Lexington. It's more than just the chickens, it's kind of the image and the environment in which the chickens are placed. 
Foreman remains confident, however, that chickens will one day be allowed in the city. Absolutely. I, I, it's just a matter of time. If it doesn't go through this time, we'll be back. Though chicken supporters remain optimistic, a similar measure five years ago failed to reach a public hearing. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Alex Maragos. Lexington City Council will hold a work session on the chicken issue tonight at 730. The session is open to the public and will take place at City Hall. While chickens are on the mind of many residents, Lexington's appearance is a more concerning issue to some. Lexington resident Don Faulkner does not grow grass in his yard or flowers. He grows weeds. This, the city revised its yard maintenance ordinance and now grass and weeds on private property cannot be taller than 10 inches. The old ordinance allows lawns to be as tall as 15 inches. But it looked nice and it was, you know, six feet tall, but they had little border around it like it was a real flower bed, but it was in fact a bunch of weeds. Local officials said overgrown yards are an eyesore in the community, but Faulkner said more residents should grow weeds. But grasses like that serve little or no purpose to wildlife. City council members admitted that the ordinance could be amended in the future if police find the law too ambiguous to enforce. The cows at McClung's Dairy in Fairfield, Virginia are milked every morning, all year round. Colby Sheets works the morning shift and said dairy farming is good business because it is always in season. Rockbridge reporter Katie Stewart and Becky Michael learn more about the process. It's 7 o'clock a.m., 16 degrees outside, and the cows at McClung's Dairy Farm in Fairfield, Virginia are up and ready for their morning milking. Country music plays as the first group of 32 cows show up for work. The dairy, which opened in 2010, has a herd of 260 cows. The cows like the music as much as the dairy employees do. These creatures of habit know what to expect when they go in for milking. First, the cows enter and arrange themselves in the parlor. Then, dairy employees hose off and disinfect the cow's udders and give them a tug to get the milk flowing. The electronic milker does the rest. Next, 2,000 gallons of whole raw milk chill in a holding tank. It's transported by a tanker truck, and he comes in and, and pumps it out and takes it, to, takes it to Lynchburg. Dairy farmers face two main challenges these days. Feed prices, they, you know, they, they rise and they fall too, but I would say they probably rise more than they fall. And another thing I would probably say would be is this land, land availability. Even still, McClung's hopes to double the herd in the next two years. It's kind of a learning experience every day. What worked yesterday might not work today. For the Rockbridge Report, this is Katie Stewart and Becky Michael. Milk from McClung's dairy is processed and eventually sold at local Kroger supermarkets. Was well, the warm weather here to stay? Stay tuned to plan your weekend accordingly. And if fishing is in your plans, the rivers were recently restocked with trout. Learn more when we come back. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Spring has come to Lexington as temperatures continue to be on the rise. Friday will be a warm and sunny day with a high of 71 and a low of 54. Saturday will bring about a few scattered showers, but the temperature will only fall 2 degrees to a high of 69. The, cloud will, the clouds will stay through Sunday, but so will the warm temperatures with a high of 77 and a low of 56. It will be downright hot on Monday with the high reaching 86, but Tuesday will be partly cloudy again with a high of 79 and a low of 47. It seems that once you go to Perry McClure High School, you just can't stay away. Out of 26 people currently coaching at Perry McClure, 16 of them are graduates of the boys basketball coach. Uh, the boys basketball coach graduated in 1971. People come back for the love of the community and the kids. Girls basketball coach Adam Gilbert played for the coach Fox and says he came back because of the pride of the, he has for the school and what he learned there. Our graduates include the varsity baseball coach, the wrestling coach, and the girls tennis coach. <clears throat> Lexington native Danny Cole has spent the past few months preparing for the April's NFL draft. The former Virginia Tech football standout is excited and eager for a chance to compete on football's biggest stage. Cole classifies himself as an underdog and is often praised for his relentless work ethic and fierce competitiveness on and off the field. If he achieves the goal of making the NFL roster, he'll be the first pro football player to ever come out of Lex Lexington. Since I was in high school, I, only, I always tried to take on that underdog role, that uh, you know, kind of under the radar, um, you know, people don't expect you to do much uh, kind of uh, mentality. The NFL Draft takes place on April 26th. Cole plans to watch here in Lexington with his family. According to the CDC, 26% of Virginia residents are obese. This past weekend, Let's Move Lexington and the Lexington Community Pool joined forces to promote a healthy and more active lifestyle. Reporter Papa Ose has more. Let's Move Lexington aims to fight childhood obesity, but on this day, it wasn't only about the kids. I like the pool idea because it gets people of all ages involved. And for those people who perhaps haven't worked out a lot, it's sort of a safe way of getting them reintroduced into healthy living. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 20% of adults in Rockbridge County are physically inactive. For one of its free monthly events, Let's Move Lexington teamed up with the Lexington Community Pool on March 24 to give families a day of fun and health through swimming. Also information about healthier lifestyles. The day-long event gave families the chance to come in and have fun while exercising. Well, it was fun for me. <laughs> um, our son was a little bit scared of the deep water, but other than that, it's a lot of fun. We love coming to this, to this pool, and it's a great facility. The event not only brought together families, but also the Lexington, Buena Vista, and Rockbridge right? County communities. It's been gratifying to see what a community, you know, a community like Lexington can do when they all come together. And it's not just Lexington, it's, it's, it, it's BB, it's Rockbridge County. Swimming provides a full body exercise. Swimming coach Craig Charlie says this is something the community pool stresses to promote overall health in the community. With the event today, Let's Move Lexington and the community pool hope that families learn about a healthier lifestyle while having fun. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Papa Ose. Let's Move Lexington will have a celebration of healthy living at Rockbridge County High School on April 28th. They expect it to be their biggest event. For some, fishing is a sport of patience, but our Evelyn Rupert reports that for others, it's a race. Tuesday morning, fishermen chased a hatchery truck along South River in Rockbridge County, hoping to hook freshly stocked trout. It didn't take long for word to spread about the unannounced stocking. With the cell phones and stuff. All the new technology, yep, don't take long. <laughs> One of my friends called me and told me that they were stocking today. Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries fish biologist Steve Reeser says the department doesn't publicize the location of trout stockings until 4 p.m. that day. But that doesn't stop the fishermen that line up behind the Corsi Springs hatchery truck. People see the stocking truck coming this direction. Uh, They'll get on the cell phone and call their friends and let everybody know. We have actually people that uh, will, f will wait at the hatchery and follow the truck from the hatchery. Some fishermen say keeping the stocking schedule secret is unfair. 
I wish I would let, let, let you know ahead of time, but that's just because I work all the time. Usually a lot of the trout are caught out by the time I get off at four o'clock. Reeser said that the put and take program is designed to give people the opportunity to take trout home from October to May. They are caught out at a, at a steady rate over a several week period, but they're not all caught out in the first few hours or first day. Tuesday's traffic jam suggested that fishermen don't agree. With what the license costs now, they should let people know, uh, give everybody a chance. South River will be stocked twice more before May 15th. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Evelyn Rupert. To keep up with the trout stockings in the county, visit the Game and Inland Fishers website at dgif.virginia.gov. Well, it's been real Lexington. Stay tuned for the uh, newsmakers after the show.